Boeing 767 aircraft review. Let's start our review with normal arrival and departure procedures. Standard operating procedure requires that the first step in any door operation is to verify the status of your door. The CSD will instruct the flight attendants to disarm when the fastened seatbelt sign has been extinguished. To disarm, raise the arming lever cover and move the arming lever to the disarmed position. Lower the arming lever cover. Verify the door is disarmed by checking the girt bar lockdown indicators are blank and the emergency placard has retracted from view. Walk to the opposite door and verify it is disarmed. Confirm to the CSD that your door is disarmed and cross-checked. After verifying your door is disarmed, assess outside conditions to ensure it is safe to continue. Rotate the door handle to the open position and use the recessed door assist handles to push the door up. Ensure the up latch is engaged. The captain will give permission to close the doors. Push the door up slightly to clear the up latch mechanism. Push the up latch in and hold it there. Use the recessed door assist handles to lower the door. Rotate the door handle to the closed position. Door 1L can be opened and closed electrically. To open, verify the door is disarmed. Then assess outside conditions. Rotate the door handle to the open position. Press and hold the main door up switch until the door is open and the up latch engages. To close, press the main door down switch. This automatically disengages the up latch mechanism. Continue to hold the down switch until the door is fully lowered. Rotate the door handle down to the closed position to close and lock the door. When the bridge starts to retract, the CSD will instruct flight attendants to arm the doors. Raise the arming lever cover. Push in and hold the slide arming release button. Move the arming lever to the armed position. Lower the arming lever cover. Verify the door is armed by checking the red girt bar lockdown indicators are visible and the emergency placard is in full view. Cross check the opposite door and confirm with the CSD that your door is armed and cross-checked. Now let's look at the location of emergency and safety equipment. We'll begin on the flight deck. For firefighting, you will find a halon extinguisher, a fire crash axe, a smoke hood, and a pair of protective gloves. There are also smoke goggles adjacent to each flight deck seat. For security purposes, there is a restraint kit containing scissors, tape, handcuffs, and rope. Behind each crew seat, there is a life vest. In the cupboard behind the flight deck door, there are two portable oxygen bottles, a first aid kit, a radio beacon, a portable oxygen bottle restraint pouch, and a search mirror. There is a 46-person supplemental life raft in the closet aft of the flight deck door. In the same closet, there is also a physician's kit. Next to the 1L jump seat, there are two fire extinguishers, a water extinguisher, and a halon extinguisher. On the bulkhead above the 1L jump seat, there is a smoke hood. A megaphone is located in the first overhead bin on the left. A portable oxygen bottle is located in the side pull-out drawer in the business class section. Mid-cabin, there is a halon extinguisher and a smoke hood mounted on the doghouse behind the last row of seats. 
Below the Halon extinguisher, in the doghouse, left side, there are two portable oxygen bottles. Above the O2L jump seat, there are five infant life vests. At the rear of the aircraft, in the last two overhead bins on the left, are a portable radio beacon, a megaphone, and a first aid kit. Also stored here are 10 more infant life vests and the emergency medical kit. In the left doghouse behind the last row of seats, center cabin, there are two portable oxygen bottles. A halon extinguisher is located at the 2L jump seat. In the right doghouse, center cabin, behind the last row of seats, there are two portable oxygen bottles. Above the O1R jump seat, there is a first aid kit. In the right doghouse, behind the last row of seats at the rear of the aircraft, there are two portable oxygen bottles. On the bulkhead, above the aft center jump seats, there are two smoke hoods. At the 2R jump seat, there is a water extinguisher. Every flight attendant jump seat is equipped with a flashlight and a crew life vest. Now let's have a look at the oxygen systems on the Boeing 767. The flight deck masks are enclosed in a compartment at each seat. To operate, squeeze the red levers to remove the mask. Place the harness over your head with the mask covering your nose and mouth. Release the red levers to allow the oxygen to flow. The passenger cabin of the Boeing 767 is equipped with chemical oxygen generators. Pulling on one mask releases a pin, which activates the generator to allow the flow of oxygen to all masks attached to that unit. Once started, the flow will last for approximately 12 minutes and cannot be turned off. Oxygen flow is confirmed when the inline flow indicator is visible. If an oxygen compartment fails to open, it can be opened by depressing the latch in the seam of the compartment. When you hear the three chime signal, the final warning to the cabin crew to be seated, flight attendants must pick up the handset, press the reset button, and restow the handset. Open interphone to the flight deck is now available. Open interphone and critical phases of flight are not the same. For takeoff, open interphone is available from the three chime signal until the aircraft is into a stable climb configuration. For landing, open interphone will again be available from the three chime signal until after the aircraft turns off the active runway. During the time that open interphone is available, to contact the flight deck in an emergency, Flight attendants need only pick up the handset and speak directly into the mouthpiece. Outside of these times, for flight attendants to contact the flight deck for an emergency, pick up the handset, press the pilot switch at least five times. Indications on the flight deck of this call are a series of at least five chimes. There is an evacuation signal system panel on the flight deck at each cabin door area and at the right side overwing jump seats. Any one of these panels may be used to initiate an evacuation. To initiate an evacuation from any of the cabin panels, lift the plastic guard and press the command button. Upon hearing the signal, silence the horn and conduct the evacuation. To open the door with slide wrapped inflation, Assess outside conditions. Verify the door is armed. And rotate the door handle up to the open position. Slide wrapped inflation is complete in approximately five seconds. If the slide fails to inflate, hold on and pull the manual inflation handle. To open the door without slide wrapped inflation, Assess outside conditions, disarm the door, 
rotate the door handle up to the open position and use the recessed door assist handles to push the door up. Ensure the up latch is engaged. To open a window exit, assess outside conditions. Remove the cover from the upper handle. Pull in and down on the upper handle while grasping the lower handhold. Turn the window sideways and throw it out the exit opening as far forward as possible. Visually check to ensure the ramp slide is inflated by looking aft outside the aircraft. If the ramp slide fails to inflate, open the cloth cover and pull the manual inflation handle. Although highly unlikely, it may be necessary to evacuate through the flight deck windows. While holding the handle, depress the button on top and rotate the handle aft. Using the handle below the window, crank the window open. Use the escape tape located in the ceiling. Throw this overboard and use it to climb down to the ground. To exit, put one leg out first, followed by your body. All exits may be used in the land evacuation. The responsibilities of the captain and first officer include completing the abnormal and emergency checklist, giving the evacuation signal, assisting with the evacuation as required, and evacuating through the flight deck windows if necessary. Position 1L, the CSD, sits at the jump seat at 1L. If necessary, 1L will activate the emergency light switch, which illuminates the emergency lighting system. 1L will assess and open 1L, conduct an evacuation, and must also check the condition of the flight deck crew. 1L will evacuate themselves after removing the forward megaphone and radio beacon. At all cabin window exits, flight attendants must direct the passengers to step out foot first and follow the arrows to slide down the wing. O1L, if carried, sits at the forward overwing jump seat left side. O1L will assess and, in a land evacuation, open O1L and conduct an evacuation there. Position O2L sits at the aft overwing jump seat left side. O2L will assess and, in a land evacuation, will open O2L and conduct an evacuation. Position 2L sits at the jump seat at 2L. 2L will assess and open 2L and conduct an evacuation through 2L. 2L will evacuate themselves after removing the aft megaphone and radio beacon. Position 1R sits at the outboard jump seat at 1R. 1R will assess and open 1R and conduct an evacuation. 1R will evacuate themselves after removing the forward first aid kit. Position O1R sits at the forward overwing jump seat right side. O1R will assess and, in a land evacuation, open O1R and conduct an evacuation. O1R will evacuate themselves after removing the center first aid kit. Position O2R sits at the aft overwing jump seat right side. O2R will assess and in a land evacuation open O2R and conduct an evacuation. Position 2R sits at the jump seat at 2R. 2R will assess and open 2R and conduct an evacuation through 2R. 2R will evacuate themselves after removing the aft first aid kit and the emergency medical kit. It is the responsibility of each crew member to remove their flashlight when necessary and do a thorough cabin check before evacuating. On the Boeing 767, the door exits become the preferred exits for a water evacuation as they are equipped with slide rafts. All crew members and passengers will don a life vest. The window exits are blocked and passengers are directed towards the nearest door exit, 
the window exits may be used as a last resort. If the window exits are used, there are escape tapes in the forward frame of the two forward window exits. Flight attendants should direct ABPs to attach the tape to the hook on the wing. Flight attendants must direct passengers who use the window exits to step out foot first, inflate their life vests, and jump into the water from the leading edge of the wing. Passengers will then swim to the nearest raft. Once the water evacuation at the door exits is complete, crew members will inflate their own life vests and board the slide raft. Next, detach the slide raft from the aircraft. To detach the slide from the aircraft, lift the flap on the girt apron. Brace yourself by holding onto the slide raft while kneeling well back from the door sill. Pull the quick release handle. As the slide raft detaches from the girt bar, it will drop to the water level. It is still tethered to the aircraft by a mooring line. Disconnect the mooring line by pulling the red tab located under the girt apron or by cutting it with the knife. Now that the slide raft is detached, erect the canopy. To erect the canopy, unsnap and unfold the canopy halves from each side of the upper buoyancy tubes, making sure the support tubes at the girt bar end are covered. Buckle the two halves together in the center. Orally inflate the center support tubes and position them on the floor lane divider. Then, secure the canopy ties at each end of the slide raft. The reversible eight-sided raft is designed to be used during an emergency water evacuation. It has a standard capacity of 46 people, but if necessary, can safely hold up to 69 people. It does not replace the existing emergency slide rafts located at 1L, 1R, 2L, and 2R. This program covers all aspects of the 767 supplemental life raft. Topics include stowage location, launching, inflation, contents of the equipment pouch, canopy erection, survival kit contents, and other features of the 767 supplemental life raft. Although it can be deployed from any of the aircraft's eight exits, the supplemental life raft will most commonly be deployed from door 1L or 1R. To launch the raft, begin by disengaging the exit's slide raft. Remove the supplemental raft from its stowage, located in the forward closet just aft of the flight deck door. Exercise caution when dragging the raft to avoid inadvertent deployment. Position the raft at the exit. Ensure that the end of the pack with the red flap marked with inflation instructions is facing inboard towards you. Unsnap and pull the red flap down, exposing the mooring line. Grasp the mooring line handle and attach it to a fixed part of the aircraft, such as the assist handle or a seat leg. Ensuring that the exit door is fully open and free of obstructions, launch the raft into the water. Allow as much distance as possible for the raft to inflate. Now that the raft is clear of the aircraft, it is ready to be inflated. Grab the 40-foot mooring line extending between the aircraft and the raft and pull it towards you. Continue to do so until you see a red flag appearing on the mooring line. This indicates that the end of the mooring line is approaching. Now, stand sideways and with a sharp pull on the mooring line, pull the final length of line away from the raft. It is this final pull that activates the inflation cylinders and inflates the raft. Inflation takes approximately 15 seconds. Once the raft is inflated, use the mooring line to pull it into position at the door sill. Board the raft Inflate directly from the aircraft the and instruct Inflate passengers to do the same. The Inflate your vest, board the raft. 
Once boarding is complete, disconnect the raft from the aircraft by cutting the mooring line with the raft knife. To inflate the center tube, retrieve the hand pump from the pouch attached to the outside of the raft. Assemble the hand pump by attaching the adapter and extension to the pump outlet. Connect the pump and inflate the tube. Connect the hand pump to the valve stem on the center tube and manually inflate the center tube. Locate the equipment pouch, which will be found floating next to the raft, attached by a line. Inside the pouch, you will find the canopy, canopy rods, canopy mast, and the survival kit. To erect the canopy, remove the eight canopy rods from the equipment pouch and unroll the canopy. Install a canopy rod into each of the eight loops and attach to the matching socket. There are matching arrows on the canopy and raft deck. Aligning these will ensure that the two access flaps on the canopy align with the boarding stations on the raft. Attach the canopy by connecting the snaps on the canopy with the snaps on the top of each canopy rod. Now assemble the center canopy mast. The mast is in three pieces. Extend the sections until they lock into place. Place the bottom end into the floor mast stand and connect the top of the mast with the canopy by using the snap. In the survival kit, you will find a whistle, survival manual, water-activated flashlights, signal mirror, sea dye markers, utility knife, first aid supplies, water storage bag, water packets, desalting kit, day-night flares, flare parachute, sponge, bailing bucket, and a raft manual. Locations of other equipment and features are clearly marked on the upper tube of the raft. There is a large sea anchor and two smaller ones. These offer further stability to the raft and limit rotation. There is a heaving line equipped with a rubber ring to assist in water rescues. Water will activate the battery-powered raft lights. Lifelines encircle the outside of the raft, offering handholds to those in the water. And arrows direct passengers to either of the two laddered boarding stations. The 46-person supplemental life raft, now standard safety equipment, as we reconfigure our 767. This completes the visual Boeing 767 aircraft review.